Hey friends. So I'm here today to talk to you about the science behind sound. Sound is the way that our ears perceive vibration. So what's vibration? Well, it's the energy moving around us all the time, even though we're not necessarily aware of it. That's the tiny rapid movements of particles of air. These particles of air bump into each other and move in waves, not unlike waves of the ocean. <clears throat> Sound waves are a type of wave called a compression wave, which means that they move kind of this way, squeezing together and then spreading apart. It means that the vibration of sound moves through the air particles without the individual air particles themselves moving around very much. Frequency is how often the rippling wave movement passes over a certain point as time goes on. The word frequent means happening a lot. So as you look at this image, you can see that the higher the frequency of the wave, the more often the sound wave is crossing over this line, which we can imagine like a point in space. So the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch of the sound it's made. And the lower the frequency, the more spread out, the slower the vibration, and the lower the pitch that the sound is gonna make. Even though you can't see sound waves themselves, you can definitely see their effects on the objects all around us. Sound has an interesting relationship with the different states of matter, which are gas, liquid, and solid. We're used to sound moving quite easily through the gaseous state. It's just sound moving through the air. We pick that up with our ears really easily. But sound interacts with solid states too. In fact, it moves faster through metal than it does through the air. Let's say you were to put your ear on a piece of furniture or a piece of metal, like metal piping, and then <clears throat> you were to, to just have the other ear open to the air. If you tapped the object, like the metal piping or the furniture, you would actually hear the sound first through the ear that's touching it rather than through the air. And if you've ever been unfortunate enough to experience an earthquake, maybe you've noticed that you hear the sound of the earth moving towards you, the roar of the earth moving towards you before you actually feel the wibbly wobbly wave of the ground kind of moving around. Sound can even move through liquids. Have you ever noticed that you can still hear even when you're underwater swimming? Maybe you know that some sea mammals communicate sonically, that means using sound, they communicate sonically underwater. So it might take longer for sound to travel underwater or through any liquid state, but it's impossible to stop the vibration of sound. In this experiment that I'm sharing with you, courtesy of one that I saw many years ago on Bill Nye the Science Guy, I'm going to demonstrate that sound is affecting the matter around us, even though we might not be seeing the sound waves themselves with our eyes. Notice that when I move the salt around the plastic surface, it starts in one position, and I can move the individual grains of salt to a new position just by banging on the pot. Pretty cool, huh? Objects, musical instruments, but other objects too, they all have what's called a natural frequency or resonance. It's the frequency at which the object vibrates naturally, depending on its shape and what it's made of. In his work, this artist, Kenichi Kanazawa, he demonstrates the natural frequency of steel plates 
by vibrating different kinds of mallets on them. Through his use of sand and these different mallets and the steel plate, his work is an example from the world of cymatics, which is just the exploration of sound frequencies and how they reflect the incredible organization and detail of patterns found in nature. Check it out. As he changes from one mallet to another, you can see that the, the plate is vibrating in different ways because the salt or the sand is rearranging itself into some patterns that once they arrive there, they kind of stay there. How does the science of sound relate to music? Well, in so many ways. We'll just talk about a few. Music is the organization of patterns of vibration over time. The dimensions and shape of an instrument affect the pitches and the sound that it makes. So generally, the bigger the instrument, the lower the sound it makes, and the smaller the instrument, the higher the sound it makes. I'll demonstrate with some recorders. So here you see that I've got three sizes of recorder. The soprano, which is what most of you or many of you or hopefully all of you have played. Then I have an alto recorder, a little bit bigger. And Compared to the soprano, I have the sopranino, which means little soprano, pretty tiny. So let's explore the ways that these sounds are different from each other when I play the same patterns on each of these instruments. Hopefully you can hear that the sopranino has the highest sound as it's the smallest instrument. The soprano has a pre pretty high sound, but the alto, well, the alto has a much lower sound compared to the other two. Changes in pressure can cause changes in the pitch of wind instruments. One of the most common wind instruments is dun, 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 the voice. Don't forget that you carry an instrument around with you all the time. So how does the voice work? Well, when we speak, changes in pressure occur at our vocal folds, which are two flaps that rub together, creating the vibrations that make up the sound of your voice. So singing is the very intentional vibration at the vocal folds and it's kept going by the breath. It's sustained by air for a long time. The throat and the mouth act as like a speaker or an amplifier so that the sound of your voice is kind of spread out into the air the way an instrument might have a bell on the end of it that goes out. So the way you shape your mouth, especially if you're a singer, the way you create air pressure in your tank of air down here, and the way you articulate sounds with your teeth and your tongue, and your lips, all of these help kind of make the sound amplified or make you a natural speaker. In this video, an MRI, which is a type of picture that's taken like an x-ray, it gives us some insight into how our incredible instrument of our voice actually works. Here you see the 
vocal folds vibrating down here. You don't see them vibrating, but maybe you get a sense of pressure in this area of this man's body right here in his neck. And you also can see that the shape inside of his mouth is changing um, and it changes the vowel sounds that he's making. So really cool video.